In this screen capture, I am going to show you how I go about editing my own recordings. And throughout the years, I have been able to improve my recordings, not only at the time of recording, but also at the time of post-production in which I fix little things here and there. Later on, as I kept on doing different videos, I, I came to understand that both processes go together. That is, I can make recordings that have in consideration the processes that take after the recording was made in order to do a better production overall. So, as I explained in the last lesson, sometimes when I make a mistake during my recording, I simply stop, I think about it, and then I start again, basically because I know that at the time of post-production, I can go in and delete any of the parts with relative ease. So I'm going to go ahead and start editing this video. I am going to narrate all the changes that I do. And this might give you a good sense of the type of work that you might see ahead of you if you decide to do this for many of your lectures or if you plan to do this for many recordings of any kind. Very well. The first part is to bring these down to the timeline and I'm going to right click and choose add to the timeline at the playhead. The very first thing that appears is the recording dimensions and I'm going to accept that and click OK. And there it is. That is my initial video. I'm going to start playing and I'm going to start changing things here and there. And as I move forward, I will give comments on why I chose to do different things. Fixing mistakes. Fixing mistakes. In this part, I am going to cover some basic techniques about how to. In this part, I am going to cover some basic techniques to improve the recording that you made by applying certain techniques. Fixing mistakes. In this part, I am going to cover different techniques that you can utilize to improve the recording that you just made. The first part, first I am going to cover how to cut different parts of your recording. And this is fairly useful. And this is fairly useful for you to pretty much get rid of the mistakes that you might have made in the recording. So I have showed all of these for you to see that this was not an easy recording. Um, and normally the way I proceed when I am not feeling um, that my delivery is coming out the way it should be is that I just keep on trying, I keep on trying until I get into a rhythm and then it just flows. So at the moment I know that I had several introductions, so I'm going to get rid of some of them. In this part, I am going to cover. So normally I start my videos by reading the title of the video that I am recording. So I am going to take out this initial part. And the true moment to make a cut would be here and not in the previous place. So I'm going to come over here. And now I'm going to listen once more. Fixing mistakes. In this part, I am going to cover different techniques that you can utilize to improve the recording that you just made. So I like this part. And now what I'm going to start working on is uh, zooming in into the application. Because right now, this is the view that the user has. And it's a fairly small view. So I am going to come to zoom and pan. And I am going to reduce the size of that and I am going to place it like this. Normally in my placing of uh, this area for showing what it is the viewing area, I don't let things like this occur. Uh, for example, I don't let the editing word to be cut out in half. If it has to happen, it has to happen. But if I can avoid it, I do avoid it. So normally I start with something like this and these little details add up at the end of the day. 
So I would like to start from here and the reason why I'm doing the zoom right now all the way to the left is because that's how the video is going to start all the way zoomed in to those branches. So now I can click play again and have an idea of how the video is going to work. Fixing mistakes. In this part I am going to cover different techniques that you can utilize to improve the recording that you just made. The first part, first I am going to cover how and this is fairly useful for you too. So I know that over here I need to do some cutting because I also repeated part of my introduction. So I'm going to place the head over there and I am going to delete all of these. And now I'm going to listen again that you just made. First I am going to cover how to cut. That was a little bit too soon so I'm going to undo it and I am going to change this so there's a little bit more time between the two words you just made. First I am going to cover how to cut different parts of your recording and this is fairly useful and this is fairly useful for you to pretty much get rid of the mistake. So uh, uh, once again I repeated this part so I am going to select I'm going to put the playhead over there and then I am going to select all of this area leaving a little bit of space. So I'm going to delete I'm going to cut and I'm going to listen to my recent change. To cut different parts of your recording and this is fairly useful for you to pretty much get rid of now one of the things that I don't like is this pretty much. Um, so I'm going to delete it and since this is a lot tighter to the other words I'm going to zoom in as much as I can so I can see exactly where my pretty much starts and where it ends. Pretty much. So it ends here. Pretty much. And now I'm going to cut it. So when I zoom out and I listen again, it should be a lot better. For you to get rid of the mistakes that you might have. And it might even improve a little bit more if I get to this, if I get these two parts together by cutting the middle portion. This is fairly useful for you to get rid of the mistakes that you might have made in the recording. So in order to show you how to cut different parts of your videos, I am going to show you how I go about production. So um, one of the things that I want to do is I already changed the screen. So the viewing area is not accurate anymore. It's really useful for you to get rid of the mistakes that you might have made in the recording. So in order to show you how to cut different parts of your since I changed now from the browser to Camtasia, this is probably the best moment in which I can zoom out. So I'm going to grab the zoom. The zoom button is already uh, pressed and I am going to expand this so I can show more of Camtasia. There we go. To the final user. And then I can also get rid of the top part. There we go. To cut different parts of your videos, I am going to show you how I go about production. I am going to show you how I go about my own productions. So I am going to show you how I go about my own productions. I'm I'm going to start by right clicking on So as you can see, I am still a little bit struggling with my delivery for this specific recording. So I just move ahead and I try to keep on working without stopping my delivery. Your videos, I am going to show you how I go about production I am going to sh so I know that over here is where I need to cut 
and I am going to graph all of these and I am going to cut now. It is important that I did the zoom behavior before I did the cut because this cut is going to inherit whatever zoom we have over here. So I am going to cut there and cut different parts of your videos. I am going to show you how I go about my own productions. So I am going to show you how I go about my own productions. I'm, I'm going to start by, so I know that I didn't cut it in the right place. So I'm going to do another cut by selecting here and I'm going to grab it there and cut it. Your videos, I am going to show you how I go about my own productions. I know that I can cut from here to about here, leaving a little bit of space about my own productions. I'm going to start by right clicking on the bin area of camera. Since right now I am showing something very specific on the screen, it's a good moment to zoom in. Clicking on the bin area of so I'm going to select to zoom in around here and with the zoom button pressed, I am going to select the next area where I can zoom in. Now, normally I don't zoom in uh, a lot more than these because it starts getting pixelated and it loses quality. So I don't go very far deep into the screen. I just keep a certain distance. And now we're going to be able to see how that works. Start by right clicking on the bin area of Camtasia and I am going These type of things can, uh, uh, are important to me so I am just going to in increase the zooming in a teensy bit so I lose the edges. There we go and this just adds a little bit more to the production of the bin. Right clicking on the bin area of Camtasia and I am going to import some of my recordings. Remember that if you don't proceed in this way through the interface, you can find the same options through the menus. So I am going to import media. Since I have uh, changed once more um, the location of whatever it is happening here, I am just going to click on the zoom and pan. And once again, I am going to focus on the screen that I have at that moment. So I am going to import media. And in this case, I'm just going to grab the first screen captures that I recorded for this Camtasia tutorial. I am going to click on this. So once again, I have changed position in my uh, recording. So I need to correct with the zoom recorded for this Camtasia tu tutorial. So I can place the zoom right now over here and then I will expand to the rest of the screen. There we go. Recorded for this Camtasia tutorial. I am going to click on this one, right click. Uh, sometimes uh, it is good to do once again the same behavior. It keeps the attention of users. Um, based on my experience, this little motion of uh, grabbing the attention does help maintaining the attention of your viewers. And I am going to add it to the timeline at the play playhead. And now I can go back once again. And there I am. Now it might have been a good idea to show the moment in which this appears in the timeline. So I can move this zoom back here. So that is shown there. So let's take a look at it. Right click and I am going to add it to the timeline at the playhead. So this is my recording and in this recording I made several mistakes and I am going to show you how I proceed when I make these mistakes.
So I, I am going to come over here and so I had a little moment of waiting over here because I wanted to think about what I was going to say next. So I can grab all of these time and just cut it from the video and then I can hear how it works. You how I proceed when I make these mistakes. So I, I am going to come over here and I am going to ask you to please listen to what I'm saying because he's going to provide a little bit of an insight on to how I record and then how I correct for the mistakes that I made throughout my recording. So I am going to play the recording and let it go through um, different parts in this video form and you're going to be able to do that anonymously or um, by giving so in this moment i am showing one of the mistakes that i'm making and as you can see over here part of what is happening is that you see these two audio forms right there i'm gonna actually momentarily change the dimensions of my screen so this becomes very evident i'm gonna increase this and i'm gonna increase these and this visual representation of this sound that you see here is the exact same sound that you see down here. What it is happening is that whatever are the sounds that the computer is making at that moment are recorded in a different track. However, you can still see some of it appearing over here because it came out of my own speakers and it got back in into my microphone. So that's why it feels a little bit echoey at this moment. So the way to proceed to correct something like this would be the following. I will come over here and I would select the entire area up to here. And now I'm going to press on this channel. So this is blue and now it's selected. And I am going to click on this lock icon over here. This means that whatever it is that we do uh, to this selection, it will not be applied to track two. So at this moment, I'm going to go to the audio button. Now I'm going to move this screen a little bit further down so I can see better. Let me correct also over here. There we go. And now we can reduce this part of the screen. And now we're going to see the controls that dynamically appear on this part of the screen when we click on the audio button. Since this track is locked, I'm going to be able to... Uh, let me think again. I am going to do it the other way around. I'm going to lock track one, which is the sound that is coming out of the computer. And I'm going to silence everything else. The result of this is that only the audio that was coming out of the computer will be kept. Here it goes. Um, different parts in this video form. And you're going to be able to do that anonymously or um, by giving... There we go. Now, one of the things that I'm already noticing is that I am making changes for, for a part that I am going to delete. So I am going to momentarily unlock that I am gonna double click here and I am gonna cut this little part and there goes the video and you're gonna be able to do that anonymously or um, by giving so at this moment during my recording I realized that um, I didn't deliver exactly what I wanted so my response normally this type of as would have bothered me a lot in the past and i would have deleted i am not really sure i would do it these days but i'm gonna delete it here now just to show you um, how it's done um, so select it cut it and it's all done i realized that i didn't deliver exactly what i wanted so my response was to stop, to think about it, and to start again in a way that it can be later on just cut and added. So I re. So basically, what I did 
is so in essence what I did is repeating this last part in a so I know that all of these uh, were repetitions and I can select it all and cut it on just cut and add it so in essence what I did is repeating this last part in a way that would be satisfactory to me so this is how it sounded before and you're gonna be able to do that anonymously or uh, once again you can hear that echo because you're hearing both the sound of the computer and what is being recaptured by my microphone and you're gonna be able to do that anonymously or um, by once again what I want to do is to lock track one where the sound from the computer has been recorded I am going to select all of that area and I'm gonna click on the audio button and click on silence whenever I replay these the echo will be gone that before and you're gonna be able to do that anonymously or um, by giving there we go um, this part can be shortened so I'm gonna just grab it and cut it very well or um, by giving and this is how it sounded in my second try or you have the option to or you have in here I realized that for some reason this got uh, shifted and I, I'm not really sure exactly how that happened it could have happened in my cutting of different areas so what I'm gonna do is proceed by splitting actually I'm gonna undo that I am gonna select track 2 as locked and now track 1 I'm gonna select it and once that track 1 is selected I am going to split it now I'm going to grab this part, drag it over there. I'm going to grab this side. I'm going to drag it closer to the edge. And now I'm going to make them overlap so they occur at the right moment. Or, or you have... I can do a little bit more. Or you have the option to identify yourself. Very well, so part of what happens whenever we cut from only one track is that the other track might get out of sync and this is the way to correct for that. I'm going to proceed once more. I am going to un unlock that one, lock this one. I'm going to make a brand new selection as before and I am going to apply the silence once more. There we go. in my second try or you have the so I can make this a teensy bit short there we go you're gonna be able to do that anonymously or um, by giving and this is how it sounded in my second try or you have the option to identify yourself so I corrected for the things that I was not since I am uh, right now doing very small circles around this area where I cut um, certain things it might be a good idea to zoom in to show in detail what that is so I'm gonna come back to the zoom and pan and I am going to zoom right there probably not that much probably that much there we go or you have the option to identify yourself okay. so I corrected for the things that I was not saying well in this area and then I just simply restated them later on after I spent some time thinking about it so that happened during the time of recording because I know that at that in the post-production later on after I spent some time thinking about it so that happened during the time of recording because I know that at that in the post-production process I am going to be able to correct 
Now this is a little bit more of a difficult cut because it's in the middle of a sentence and I need to cut in the word that. Oh, that at I'm gonna start a little bit earlier. A recording because I know that at that in the post-production process. So I have the word that and the word that and that's where I need to cut. So I'm gonna zoom in. probably thinks a bit less sometime thinking about it. So that happened during the time of recording because I know that at that at so I'm gonna come over here where the word that ends and I'm gonna where the word that begins actually and I'm gonna come all the way here. Probably teensy a little bit less. I know that in the post production, and that was fixed quite well. So I'm going to zoom out once again, and here we go. Recording, because I know that in the post production process, I am going to be able to correct. So the way to correct is by bringing the head of my program directly in the spot where I would like to start cutting. How do I get to know that I want to start cutting there? More One of the things that I did now that the viewer didn't see but I know that happened was that I click on the zoom in um, button in the interface so I need to show that because if not the user doesn't know what it's going on. How do I get to know that I want to start cutting so at this moment is when I go to that place. So I'm going to come over here and I am simply going to increase the size of the screen by moving this side up. And here we go. How do I get to know that I want to start cutting there? I zoomed in more than follow. And now that I zoomed in, I can go back and show only that. There, more than following the visual over here, I am following the representation of my voice in this area. I'm going to ask you to please share your first video. So once again, we have that uh, problem with the alignment of the different files, and that's because we cut previously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off I'm going to lock that track. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to once again do a split so I can correct for that um, problem in the syncing of the audio that is coming out of the computer and the audio that is being said at the time of the recording. So I think that now they are overlapping in this area. I'm going to ask you to please share your first video in this video. And now that it's done, once again, I'm going to lock this one, unlock this one. I am going to select that track and I am going to specify the amount of area that I would like to make silent. And there we go. Turn off my voice in this area. I'm going to ask you to please share your first video in this video form and you're going to be able to do that anonymously or um, by giving it works uh, probably the only thing that i would like to do is to zoom out a little bit because some of the screen is not really showing so i'm going to come over here go to zoom and pan and i'm going to increase enough as to be able to see both sides of the screen where I'm interacting. So here we go. More than following the visual over here, I am following. So since we have two zooms right next to each other, I can delete one of them by selecting it and clicking on the delete key. And then I can make this zoom work for me in the way I want to. More than following the visual over here, I am following the representation of my voice in this area.
I'm gonna ask you to please share your first video in this video form and you're gonna be able to do that anonymously or um, by giving and then I stop so I know just by the visual representation of these that in this area I can start cutting and therefore I'm gonna put the head right there where I can cut now, now it is up to me to decide how much now it is up to me to decide how much of this recording I want to take away. So I think that this gives you a good idea of how I proceed. Um, I selected this recording especially because I had a lot of problems at the beginning of it and now you have seen how I have worked to fix those problems. Also I would like to point your attention at these over here. I am only 3 minutes and 46 seconds into my recording. However, I've been showing you uh, what I have been doing du during the time of editing for about half an hour. So the process of hearing back your own recording and doing little fixings to make the recording of high quality, while it's a simple process and you get to learn it after editing one or two videos, it is also a fairly long process. So in order for you to make a video that is about 10 minutes long, depending on how many mistakes you made, it might take you a good 30 minutes to an hour to be able to complete. Now, at the end of the day, that is not a bad figure because your recording will be shared with, with all of your students at any moment and whatever they are. So very well. I hope that this um, showing of my editing process facilitates your work as you move forward.